I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you. That's my position on that. What? Bill Maher there, astonishing his own audience. And I suppose what we have in the subject of abortion is the necessity of confronting what we mean when we talk about rights, when we talk about humanity, when we talk about life. Bill Maher said some insane things to Piers Morgan over on his show Real Time with Bill Maher and Russell Brand was having none of it. And so was a lot of other people out there, even non-conservatives, even, even liberals, hardcore liberals, woke cultists. They were even saying, Piers Morgan was saying on Bill Maher's show, dude, that's a little bit dark. That's a little bit insane what you're saying. We're going to check out that clip here in one second and also check out Russell Brand's response to the whole thing. I love Russell Brand's response to this Bill Maher clip. It's just nuts. And sometimes Bill Maher, he'll, he'll show some signs. He'll show some, seems like he's heading towards the light a little bit, possibly being red pilled. And then sometimes he says insane stuff like in this clip that Russell Brand's going to show here in one second. Let's check this out. Centralization always going to lead to division and polarization. Here's a curious moment from the Bill Maher show where British pundit Piers Morgan and Bill Maher discuss what the meaning of abortion is. We're all going to have strong views on abortion, aren't we? Because ultimately human life is sacred. Ultimately bodily autonomy on a variety of issues now is continually being discussed. Let's see where this issue takes Piers Morgan and Bill Maher while we ourselves address whether or not you agree with universal laws one way or the other or the maximum amount of representation in your community. Actually there are many countries in Europe where it's completely illegal to have an abortion. Poland, Malta, you know, places like Andorra, you know, so uh, and if you look at Germany and France and countries like that it can be 10, 12 weeks is the term limit that you're allowed to have an abortion legally. So America is not such an outlier. It does go to the states. I think a lot of Americans on the left do think that this is somehow a really unique American problem or an issue that only pertains to them in terms of the legality of abortions. Actually, comparative to Europe, it's not massively dissimilar. But the thing that's crazy is at a time... You know what's weird? I know this is a little bit off topic, and I don't mean this in like a shady sort of way, but it is weird that people like Piers Morgan obsess over American politics so much. Like he's saying himself on Bill Maher's show that there is all these issues in Europe as well. Why are you obsessing over the American commentary side of things? It's just funny how people from like China and, and you know, all these other like Europe, people like Piers Morgan, they'll come in and like they know there's money in the American politics game. So they're going to do commentary on our stuff that's happening and not really talk about much that's happening in Europe. That, that's just, it's always been strange to me. Anyway. I am when America is facing so many huge geopolitical threats, um, where there's a huge tech revolution going on, where the economy is faced with all kinds of challenges. The idea that you're fighting an election around this issue um, seems to be, you know, just strange. Back to the 19th century. Well, not, not if you believe it's murder. I want you guys to listen up at what Bill Maher just said right there. Listen closely to what Bill Maher is going to say right here, and then Russell Brand's going to come in and just demolish everything that he has to say. This is some crazy stuff. Like, this is, this is insane. Like, this... If someone said the equivalent to what Bill Maher is saying right here on the right, they would be on lists. But to the woke cult, this is just okay. At least to, to the vast majority of them. To some of them, it's not. But this is... It's, it's wild stuff. Listen closely. Lock in. Because this is about to get really wild. <laughs> Not if you believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing. Or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they, uh, pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. Well, it's very obvious why they do the leave it up to the states thing is because number one if you try to pass an abortion ban across the country it's probably not going to pass like it's probably not going to work number two if you try to pass an abortion ban across the country and you run on that and you say i'm going to ban abortion in every single state the say states aren't going to have a say like like bill maher is talking about here then it's it's probably not going to end well for you election wise people are going to get very very upset very very offended but if you leave it up to the states it's kind of their their attempt at having the best of both worlds where you can say, hey, look, we banned abortion in Florida, in Texas, you know, a lot of states in the South, they banned abortion because of the laws that we passed, because we left it up to the states. 
And then also on the other side of things, when people get mad about the abortion ban, you can say, well, hey, you can still go get abortions in California and, and New York and, and all these other woke states. You could still go get abortions there. It's not like we banned it across the country. You can still go get abortion. So it's kind of like they're trying to do the best of both worlds thing, which is it's it's kind of BS to me. Like, I, I wish people would just stand their ground more and just stand for something. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting elected. It's all a business move. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. He just said, do you notice how silent Bill Maher's audience is right here? He just said, I think it's murder. And it is. Or, or they think it's murder. And I think it's murder as well. I'm just okay with that. I'm just cool with that. That is, that is insane things to say. Why are you okay? And I know like we're going to get to Russell Brand's response here in a second. Why is it more okay for the murder of an unborn child who couldn't even have committed a sin yet, couldn't even have hurt anyone physically, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, couldn't have done any harm to the world yet. Why are you okay with their murder if you think it is murder? And you're not okay with people putting, being put down in prison, people who have committed crimes, who have committed actual murders. You're not okay with them. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that you should be. I'm just saying, why do you draw the line at someone is not allowed to be murdered once they come out? Of the womb but when they're inside it's still murder but you're okay with it i i don't understand this is insane talk i i mean there's eight billion people in the world i'm sorry we won't miss you that's my position on it. what bill ma there astonishing his own audience and i suppose what we have in the subject of abortion is the necessity of confronting what we mean when we talk about rights, when we talk about humanity, when we talk about life. And Russell Brand is completely correct here in saying that these people, they'll weaponize these issues such as abortion to not only manipulate the way that you vote with politicians, but also manipulate the media that you consume. And this is where ground news comes in. Ground news gathers related articles from more than 50,000 sources around the world in one place. So you can compare how different outlets cover the same story. Ground news was created by a former NASA employee to empower readers to navigate our complex media landscape. Ground News also gives you context about the source of the information itself, if they have a political bias, how reliable their reporting practices are, and who owns them. And they're all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. So that allows you to even see if a story is being disproportionately covered by one side, which would really have been helpful during the 2020 elections when it comes to a certain laptop. Just take a look at this story on Ground News about Fannie Willis and the inconsistent consistencies that were discovered by the Department of Justice. You can see if you scroll down a little bit that this story was covered by over 10 sources and zero left leaning sources covered this story. And I wonder why that would be because this story obviously makes the left look bad. It makes the indictment on Trump. It makes the whole case against Donald Trump look bad. So obviously the left leaning sources aren't going to cover this story. And ground news just kind of brings them all together and shows you the bias. You can see over here, every single article will show you the bias distribution 90 percent of the sources lean right on this one because there's only one center leaning source that covered it and zero left leaning sources and it will show you this for every single article so you know the bias around certain topics and around certain articles that are being written in today's society where everyone calls themselves a journalist and propaganda moves faster than the speed of light ground news becomes a solution to this problem which is why i am glad to take them on as a sponsor and share their website with you so if getting accurate information is just as important to you as it is to me go ahead and go over to ground.news slash reloaded or scan the qr code to give it a try if you sign up through my link you'll get 40 percent off the vantage plan which is what i use to get unlimited access to all features on ground news i think ground news is doing important work and i really really hope that you'll check them out in a sense it's such a fundamental ontological question such an important spiritual question what is life what are our duties and rights over life that it's odd that it's become determined by secular ideas is like the left versus the right. I suppose one might argue that life begins at the moment of conception when there is a flash of life, when there is the potential for a human life to unfold from that moment forth. And in a sense, what Bill Maher is saying is extremely interesting. He respects absolutists. The aspect of this subject that I've always found fascinating when I've spoken to people who have strong 
pro-choice views is that by entering into the discourse, we are mutually acknowledging that we are discussing something profound and significant. I.e., if you see a bunch of protesters outside a family planning or abortion clinic, again, depending on what terminology you prefer, it's not the same as having your toenails cut. It's not just cellular matter. We're talking about the sanctity of life. We're talking about consciousness. We're talking about humanity. I suppose where I arrive is at the point of decentralization, at the point of federalization, at the point of individual freedom and the ability of communities to set their own guidelines and laws precisely because of the complexity. And because when it comes to spirituality, I have my own beliefs. But what are the beliefs that you feel so strongly that you are willing to impose them on others, that you are willing to say, I believe so strongly. Now, a lot of people will say, now, well, murder, let's say, you know, we're all saying the murder of a realized adult human is wrong. We don't have problems with that. But there, I suppose there are subcategories of self-defense. The state commits murder. The state commits murder in war. The state annihilates entire population. Yeah, my, my issue with it, with Bill Maher saying stuff like that, and like Russell Brand said, astonishing his own audience, is the fact that he is not okay. Like, if something is murder, that means it is a realized human. You know, you can't really murder someone who's not a human. Like, you can't really murder someone who's not a realized human. So if he's admitting, if Bill Maher is saying that it's murder, then why is the line drawn at the murder is okay when they're outside of the womb, when the person, I, I, it's just, it's absolutely mind blowing to me. Maybe I'm the insane one. Let me know in the comments if I'm the crazy one. That's just an insane statement to me. Whether you are on the side of pro-choice or pro-life or I don't care, like whatever side you're on, that has to be a nuts statement. If it's not, then we're doomed. If the pro-life side really believes that, yeah, it's murder, I'm just cool with it, we're doomed, we're screwed, it's it, it's over. Like these people, that's like sociopath behavior. Like that, like straight up, that that's like the definition of sociopath behavior. They don't care about murder, they're cool with that. Then society is falling apart before our eyes if they can frame it correctly. So even with a subject like homicide, there are variations, degrees, vicissitudes and qualifications. So with a subject like terminating a human life at some point whilst gestating, it's likely that there will be variation. And in fact, that doesn't need to be stated because we can see that from the political and cultural landscape. There's endless variation, as Piers Morgan said. Across Europe, there's variation. Across the United States of America, there's variation. And what's plain to me is that politicians from both sides of the political aisle mobilize this subject in order to create an emotional response and to stoke division and benefit from polarization, knowing that there are certain demographics that will always vote in one direction and others that will always oppose them. And then as the other pundit on Bill Maher said, we won't think about economic issues and issues of power and issues of war and issues of centralizing authoritarianism. Of course, they'll try to weaponize it. That's that's what I was saying. Like, I wish somebody would come in and I think Vivek Ramaswamy might be the closest thing that we have to it, uh, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years i wish somebody would just come in and stand for something instead of trying to say oh yeah let's try to play the best of both worlds and say that we pushed an abortion ban and only do it and you know leave it up to the states but so that we can also say at the same time that you can still go get an abortion over here it's like i just wish somebody would stand for something and i'm not even saying like the abortion issue specifically i just wish somebody would stand for something in general absolutely that's not like an easy topic you know like abortion is not an easy topic to to stand for one side or the other it's a complicated issue. It's a nuanced issue, things like that. They like to stand for the easy stuff, but not the hard stuff like geopolitics. And should we be involved in war? Should we actually be America first? Or should we just say we're America first and then get involved in every single war ever? Like it, those are the things that I wish people would stand for. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of Russell Brand's response to this Bill Maher clip. That's still just absolutely insane to me that he said that on live television and, and got away with it, by the way. Like that was like a week old clip now and nothing happened. Imagine if somebody said the equivalent on the right to that thing. They would be taken off everything, canceled from everything. And, you know, I, I don't even know what would happen to them. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this whole Russell Brand, Bill Maher situation. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And hope to see you guys on the next video.